This week's hits set the toes a tapping, except one hit somewhere should never happen. That zeitgeist defining, genre refining, incompetent white boy rapping. Yes, welcome to the beginning of the end as we survey the first week of our last year, that ending 6th of January 1991. And number 10, it's the generic poodle head power rock of John Bon Jovi back in the days when he was still ridiculously handsome with Miracle, a song which I would best describe as profoundly unmemorable and also inoffensive. Despite increasing evidence to the contrary, Bon Jovi and his band continue to, and to this day still continue, to pretend that they are genuine rock and roll stars instead of an increasingly sad oldies act. Number 9 is one time number 1, Groove is in the Heart by D-Light, another song which I would best describe as profoundly unmemorable and also inoffensive. Full of rattletrap, plank and clutter, so typical of the early 90s dance music, this was also typical of the fascinating It Doesn't Matter Who Sings As Long As It's A Pretty Girl subgenre which persists to this date. Grunge soon would be along to render this music both irrelevant and unmarketable, except guess what? Grunge disappeared up its own butt inside of three years and stupid dance music survived to this day. Go figure. Number 8, another pretty girl who literally couldn't sing was Betty Boo. Apparently her career was all washed up when she was caught out lip syncing at a live gig. With a record that I've never heard before, Doin' The Do. On the whole, I wish she would stop doing whatever she was doing and go back to being a hairdresser or whatever she was before fame called. This sounds like dance music made for hyperactive nine-year-olds. Number 7, Poodle Rock Stands Ascendant with Warren's Cherry Pie. It's all gated snares and football crowd vocals and a singer who thinks he's Steven Tyler, but it's still 20 times better than Betty Boo. This spent 7 weeks in the top 10 for a high of 6, which makes it a marginally bigger hit than All I Need Is A Miracle by Mike and the Mechanics. Number 6, it's the, and stop me if you heard this before, preternaturally luminous and eternally pulchritudinous Kylie Minogue with Step Back in Time, the second single from one of her weaker albums. In the grand scheme of all things Kylie, the subsequent Let's Get To It album probably ranks a peg below it. I really should do a Kylie Minogue album rating, shouldn't I? While Devil You Know showed it business as usual for KM, the rest of the album and singles are a little flat, a little faceless. She'd recover by ditching Stock Aitken Waterman and go on to immense success, but this single was just marking time at best. No new songs in the top 10 this week, which is rare. The next number one is still to come in our countdown, and the number one after that is at number 19 this week. Number five is Burn For You by John Farnham. Recently, Farnham had life-saving surgery for cancer in his mouth, and the whole nation held its breath in hope that he'd recover. Recover? He did, although he may well never sing again, but that is secondary. John Farnham has for over 50 years been renowned as one of the humblest, kindest and most genuine people in the entertainment industry in Australia. A profoundly decent chap. Everybody across every generation loves John Farnham and his music. If he were to run for Prime Minister, he'd win in a canter. Burn For You shows Farnham using the sensibility that rescued his career from the abyss, his unfailing ear for a good song and his vocal ability to sell it. Not his biggest hit ever, but one that would make any best of compilation. Number four, Justify My Love. I've mentioned before that I felt that Vogue was the last truly great Madonna song and this, her big statement for 1991, proves me right so far. A trite and silly record, and that's alright because Madonna's been trite and silly before and it's worked for her. This record commits a cardinal sin of being boring. It's a pity Kylie stumbled in her career at this point. The crown was there for the taking. 3. She of the big eyes and the big voice, Maria McKee, lingered long in the top 10 with her theme from Days of Thunder, a film in which Tom Cruise's performance was overdramatic and Nicole Kidman's was, well, let's say, ossified. McKee did have great things in the future. She cut an excellent album called You Gotta Sin to Get Saved a few years later, which I wholeheartedly recommend to anyone who has any money left. 
in these scanty economic times. Number two. Well, we all knew it would come to this, so it's time to stop, collaborate and listen as we address Ice Ice Baby by Vanilla Ice. This was the first hip-hop record to make number one in the US. MC Hammer beat the record out in Australia. It's probably also the first step away from the general view that hip-hop was novelty party music and was, in fact, a valid new form. Is it any good? To be honest, it's not that bad. Not as legendarily bad as some would have you believe, but whether it's great or awful is immaterial. Just as history isn't always made by nice people, musical history isn't always made by great records. Arthur C. Clarke said that only feeble minds are paralysed by facts. Well, my keen-witted watchers prepare to be unparalysed by Fowl's fantastic world of facts. It's Fowl's fantastic world of facts. Hottest rocket on the chart this week was Prey by MC Hammer, which sailed up 16 spots to 14. It topped out at number 7, but still managed a 20-week chart run, which would have kept Hammer in parachute pants and gold lame for a while longer. Meanwhile, this week's Fizzer was a former number one in Jukebox in Siberia, a piece of nostalgia-chasing guff from the temporarily reformed Skyhawks, which did nothing but devalue the reputation of a once mighty band, and was down 11 places to 25. Highest debutante is another of the doesn't matter if she can't sing as long as she's a looker singer club, Soho with Hippie Chick, only they weren't that good looking and the record was dung and we already had the hoodoo gurus. And the emeritus record on our list this week was Lily Was Here by Dave Stewart and the exceptional Candy Dolpha, which had been in for 20 weeks. Number one in the good old USA was Justify My Love by Madonna, while in the UK it was, oh dear, Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter by Iron Maiden. This time in 1990, the chart topper was Love Shack by the B-52s, and in 1992, what will probably be the last number one we ever essay in this series, in all his pomp and glory, Michael Jackson with Black and White. Number one on the album stacks was The Three Tenors with Zubin Mehta, still imposing itself on the popular psyche six months after it so gloriously soundtracked the rather inglorious 1990 World Cup. And there is but one monkey who can adorn this situation with his drumtacular skills. Monty, pound those tubs, please. Number one is in the great tradition of meh number ones, a re-release of Unchained Melody by the Righteous Brothers, which featured in the film Ghost. The song spent 50 weeks at number... <laughs> The song spent five weeks at number one and 18 weeks in the top 10, of which six were in its original chart run in August to October 1965. Legend has it that these two couldn't stand each other and that Bobby Hatfield, who wasn't happy with his vocal, had to settle for the best take he'd done so far because Bill Medley threatened to quit work for the day if they didn't move on. The song was released as the B-side of a song called Hung On You. Phil Spector, who produced the records and had a writing credit on Hung On You, was so mad that the DJs were playing the B-side and he wasn't getting any money for the A-side, rang several DJs and threatened them. The standard response to that was something along the lines of, yeah, well, what are you going to do, Phil? Shoot me? And there we have it, folks. Thanks for stopping by, and if the good lords will and the creeks don't rise, we'll have another edition next week-ish. See you then.